What is up? I am Crypto Mason and welcome back to the Crypto Mason YouTube channel. Shout out to the Gold Squad. We look for gold in every single aspect of our lives and we always find it. Now today, we are finally back for another daily market update. It's been eight days since the last daily market update. Obviously, there's a reason for this. I was in Malta uh, in Europe. So Malta is its own country. It's an island in Europe for Galaverse, okay? And Galaverse had a massive announcement uh, at in, your, in Malta. Um, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. But that is where I've been. I was in Malta. Um, and it was, it was definitely tough to, to want to make videos in a place like Malta, especially with the market being so horrible. But the point is, we are back. Um, I mean, if you have a problem with me taking a small break, I, I don't know what to tell you. But we are back from the little break right there, back to make some legendary daily market updates. Now, this was the announcement at Gala, uh, Galaverse. Now, I hope to have some kind of Galaverse type vlog or Malta vlog come out on this channel because we were taking a lot of clips um, and different GoPro footage. I was there with Meg BZK. Um, if you guys know her on TikTok, go check her out, M-E-G-B-Z-K. Um, I was there with her and we were filming some good, some good content there. So grit is this game. Okay. Epic games has basically partnered with gala games. Um, and grit will be the first gala game on the Epic game store. Now I actually got to play this game in Malta, um, on a, on a computer setup. Um, and it's basically a wild west version of Fortnite. It's a wild west version of Fortnite. Very, very crazy. Um, this will be the first gala game on the Epic Games Store. Okay, so this and and any buyers uh, will see and learn about NFTs because Grit involves NFTs. Like all of the skins and stuff are going to be NFTs, um, and that's 190 million possible users coming over to Grit. Um, so I am extremely bullish on Gala. If we look at Gala, uh, the token, right? Only problem people have is the tokenomics with this, but I mean, six cents is such a such an undervalued uh, price in my opinion. This thing has been to seventy cents before. After seeing what they can do um, at in somewhere like Malta with an event uh, like Galaverse, I'm uh, infinitely more bullish on them. Two hundred twenty-eight million dollar volume up twenty-six percent. Stacking Gala now. Let's get into the important, very important stuff right here. Not that Gala is not important, but Bitcoin is at $27,955. As you can see, my, my um, you know, free form line that I drew eight days ago has now been broken through right here, which is not good at all. And we're sitting right above my little blue rectangle right here, okay, um, which this blue rectangle was placed there from Arthur Hayes um, saying that the Bitcoin bottom is 25,000 to 27,000. So this zone right here, 25,000 to 27,000 is what Arthur Hayes, um, the uh, founder of Bitfamex, I believe, or, or Bitmex uh, said that the, the, the bottom is. So do I think that's the bottom? I sure as, sure as hell hope it is the bottom. Um, and this is because there will be insane liquidations that happen uh, at 21,000, okay? Oh, actually, no, this is for ETH. But insane liquidations will happen if Bitcoin drops below this little box, right? Because a lot of people are betting that this is the bottom uh, right here. As long as we don't go under 19,700, which is the top of the 2017 cycle. Um, but at, at this point, we just keep going, dude. Like... You know, I I was thinking we we're just gonna go like this, and now we've we've went below twenty or uh, what is that twenty eight thousand here? But the point here is, this all depends on Bitcoin and ETH. It's so hard to say what's gonna happen right now. It all depends on Bitcoin and ETH. As we can see, ETH is doing absolutely horrendous right here, sixteen percent down in seven days. Bitcoin is outperforming ETH right now. Um, and what does this mean? A lot of people think Ethereum is in a dangerous position. 
This is because the number of liquidations that will appear on the market if ETH, if ETH, if ETH falls below or to 1,150. So we should definitely look at the ETH chart and, uh, and see that 1,150. So right, let's put a line there actually so we can, we can track this. It seems like every, every time I put a line here, it goes to the line. So hopefully it does not go to this line. 1,150. Extreme amounts of liquidations will happen. There's reportedly more than $500 million in on-chain collateral and $300 million of on-chain collateral uh, near 21,600 will evaporate. Okay? So that is why we don't want Ethereum to go further down here. But right now, Ethereum is like... Like, I, 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 had, I transferred some USDT into Ethereum the other day, and it feels so crazy getting, like... You know, you just get so much more, um, and I'm, I've been so used to that $2,000 uh, ETH price. Zooming out to all the altcoins, everything is down like 20%, 10 to 20%. Once again, I am not buying altcoins. I am not buying anything. I've been stacking cash and, and working on my cash flow. That is the most valuable thing you can do right now, is work on your cash flow. Make more money. Just make try to make more money right and then you're waiting for these altcoins to bottom out now a lot of these can go even further right quant 49 or 53 dollars basically right back at my one of my my entry points which is 48 dollars my lowest entry is 27 dollars on quant could it go back there yes right this is where we're really at we're at the point where we're saying coins can go back to these horrendous prices engine 52 cents one of my entries is at 48. Can it go back there? Yes. Right? So this is why I'm not buying altcoins is because I do think these could get lower. Um, these could get even lower. Right? Now, moving into some of the news today and some of the interesting tweets and Twitter stuff that's happening. We have the Ripple CEO, Brad Garlinghouse, at Consensus. Right? I am I am obviously not at Consensus right now. Um and this is what's happening there. So listen to what Brad Garlinghouse says right here. But we've spent, I mean, one of the things when this is all said and done, we will have spent over $100 million on legal fees fighting the SEC. He says, after this is all said and done, we will have spent easily over $100 million um, fighting the SEC. $100 million fighting the SEC. Okay? Like, what, like... They are going to bat for the crypto market. XRP is currently at bat for the crypto market. Now, we also have this clip of Gary Gensler getting a little bit, like, frustrated with this guy's question. <clears throat> and basically, JV right here thinks uh, he's, it sounds like Gary is promoting slash offering backdoor deals. Uh, come in individually and talk to us while we keep the rest of the market guessing. And obviously, we know this is basically what they're doing. But this guy... Uh, gets a nice question out and we'll we'll see Gary Gensler's response and the frustration a little bit on his face. Now, if I could follow up on crypto, th th these are general questions, Chair. So uh, just recently, a bill, I believe, has been floated by uh, Senator Loomis of Wyoming, Senator Gillibrand. Senator Loomis. Loomis, excuse me, uh, and Gillibrand of New York, uh, sort of broad outlines of regulation for crypto. And I guess the question is, you know, first, what's your broad impression? Second, just, and if you can't answer that, which is doubtful, but uh, what's your overall view on the need for regulation in crypto? Uh, and then how well the bill, from what we understand, divvies up responsibilities of regulation uh, to both the CFTC and, and SEC? How well do you think you can work together to actually execute on regulation of so, crypto? So there's a lot you packed in there and, uh, I've had good dialogues with Senator Lummis and, and uh, I've known Senator Gillibrand for years and uh, certainly worked with her very closely in the Obama years. But I, th whatever comments I might have, I'm going to share with them, not with you and your audience now. And we, I really haven't reviewed their bill. It was released yesterday. Whatever comments I have, I'm going to share with them and not you. <laughs> so he literally doesn't want to answer the question. Um, and then he says uh, also released yesterday the bill was released yesterday so he hasn't went over it yet 
Um, so essentially he's saying like these conversations are kept private and we keep the rest of the market guessing, right? And then I like this from Chip uh, from On The Chain. He says, Gensler is perfectly happy to discuss which dis digital assets are securities or commodities behind closed door uh, doors, but thinks so little of the interviewer and his audience to share this information. Absolute trash. I don't like Gary Gensler one bit. Um, and it does sound like he's promoting slash offering backdoor deals where they don't tell the whole market what's what's really up. They just want them to come in individually and speak to them. Now, little piece of news here from Digital Pound Foundation. Uh, Reserve Bank of India Deputy Governor T. Rabi Sankar has said that the bank is well poised to launch its central bank digital currency this year, but it will be introduced gradually. Um, he also said process of introduction of CBDC will be gradual so that there is no disruption in the financial and banking system <laughs> so that there's no disruption. Nice. Uh, yeah, that, no, come on. There will be other disruption of the financial and banking system. CBDCs don't disrupt that. Something like XRP does. Now, moving on to the title, the, the article that made the title of this video. JP Morgan wants to bring trillions of dollars of tokenized assets to DeFi. The bank's recent tokenization of money market funds with BlackRock dovetails uh, with an institutional DeFi project led by the Monetary Authority of Singapore. Okay. Uh, it hopes, JP Morgan hopes it's found a way for decentralized finance developers to leverage the yield generating potential of non crypto assets. And this is also coming out from consensus right here. Uh, Tyrone Lobin, who's the head of Onyx, which is JP Morgan's blockchain, uh, described in detail the bank's institutional grade DeFi plans. He says, over time, we think tokenizing U.S. treasuries or money market fund shares, for example, uh, means that these could all potentially be used as collateral in DeFi pools. The overall goal is to bring these trillions of dollars of assets into DeFi so that we can use these new mechanisms for trading, borrowing, and lending, but with the scale of institutional assets, right? Insane, insane, trillions. Now, if we take a look at the total DeFi market cap, it's right now 45 billion. So that is like 950 more billions, like... To get to a trillion is what I'm saying. And the all-time high of this was 182 billion only. So if you're not betting on DeFi, you should be betting on DeFi right now. And you should bet you should bet on Illuminati DeFi. Now, what is that term I just made up right now? Illuminati DeFi is the DeFi protocols that use KYC, they comply with governments, etc. And it makes no sense for a decentralized project to comply with any government right it should just be decentralized you can't edit it you can't regulate it but we want to focus because where will these trillions be going where will jp morgan and blackrock's trillions be going not into some extremely decentralized thing right they will be going into the ones that have kyc like it says right here um where is it Institutional DeFi generally means imposing KYC strictures on crypto's permissionless lending pools. Okay, this has started to happen on Aave Arc. I believe Ripple Liquidity Hub will have stuff like this, obviously. Um, another difference in the novel approach to permissioned DeFi done using digital identity building blocks such as W3C verifiable credentials. We want to use verifiable credentials in a way of as a way of identifying and proving identity, which is different from the current Aave model. Verifiable credentials are interesting because they can introduce the scale that you need to provide access to these pools. So the scale, they want to scale into indus, uh, it, like institutional money, right? That, that level of trillions. Um, <clears throat> so that is why the title of this video is like it is, because this is literally... JP Morgan at consensus saying that they want to bring trillions of dollars of tokenized assets to DeFi. And then I'm showing you that the DeFi uh, total value locked is only a hundred billion right now with its all time high being like 250 billion. And then I'm showing you the, the total market cap is 46 billion with the all time high being like 182, right? 
And they're saying trillions. They're saying this will get to trillions. Simple, simple stuff. Why would you not bet on DeFi? Moving on, a nice little graphic I wanted to include. Altcoin Daily Web 1 was the, or we had the internet was birthed with wires and networks. We had Web 1.0, which was read only, static, which was stuff like Yahoo, MSN, uh, Google, right? And then you have Web 2.0, read, write, and it's interactive. And that is stuff like Tumblr, PayPal, YouTube, Dropbox, Netflix, right? All of those type of things. And now we have Web 3.0, which is read, write, trust, and it's verifiable. This is Ethereum, Bitcoin, excuse me, Dogecoin, all of that. Crypto, basically, Web3. Now, we recently also had Jack Dorsey with his idiotic Web 5.0 uh, stuff where he he um, said that he's building Web 5.0 on Bitcoin, right? So stupid. Like, where is Web 4.0, first of all? Um, <laughs> so everyone, look, everyone in the comments is, where's Web 5? Where's Web 5? So... Very cool graphic right here. And the final couple things we'll end off with. The Tron DAO Reserve buys $50 million of Bitcoin and Tron to add to USDD reserves. Tron DAO Reserve, which manages algorithmic stablecoin USDD, which we covered as soon as it came out. I showed you that this did come out. Also USN, which is near stablecoin. Uh, they said on Saturday that it had bought $50 million worth of Bitcoin and Tron uh, the purchase was announced in a tweet saying it was meant to safeguard the overall blockchain industry and crypto market. This is exactly what Do Kwan just did but before, he, except he bought billions of Bitcoin, uh, or sorry, billions of dollars of Bitcoin. Um, like, is it is the same thing about to happen with USDD, right? You guys saw, I covered it, just Justin Sun saying, yo, you can get 60% APY or something over here on USDD horrible right and then final thing we have is do kwan is being investigated uh for withdrawing 2.7 billion dollars from the terra ecosystem via dgen box um and he has denied these allegations as well basically a lot of people looking into it thinking he he um removed money before this all happened just wanted to throw those two in there because this stable coin stuff is getting getting crazy right and uh, if you guys want my thoughts on Luna, I don't have any. I I'm never going to invest in any of these Luna coins ever again. Ever again, right? I'm just sitting on the sidelines watching it. That is all we've got for the daily market update. I appreciate all of you. I love every single one of you. If you're still watching right now, even if you watch only a bit of the video, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, follow my Twitter, Instagram, join the Telegram group. I love every single one of you. And goodbye.